So when I'm running PhotoP and I'm doing this digital coloring, remember that I'm doing it in a raster program at full resolution at 16 by 20 by 300 pixels per inch. So to keep its processing going smoother so it doesn't lag on you like when we were doing digital inking, just close any other programs you don't need, especially Adobe programs that might be open like Photoshop and Illustrator because we don't need them anymore. We just need Photoshop to run cleanly. You save the line art as an SVG and an EPS. Those are both transferable vector formats. SVG works better with PhotoP. EPS works better with Photoshop. You can use both with either, but that's kind of just how they're designed. All right. So I'm just going to finish up this lower half of my duotones. Remember, if you want to redo something that you've done, that you've cut out, you just use your lasso and you use your magic or you use your paint bucket with option and you can just fill in that color. And you can do that with your lasso as well. So if I want maybe a little bit more variation in duotones, I can do that. All right. And then once you have those colors, remember that you can always just use your paint bucket to change them too. Right? As long as they're touching. And if I want to separate them, just turn off your black line art, make sure they're, they're all separate beneath the black line art. So that's getting a little too close. So if I delete that, then I should be able to select these colors individually. There we go. All right, is there anything else? I'm not sold on these shapes, so I'm replacing that color. There we go. And then I'm not quite sold on those shadow shapes, so I'm going to change it a little bit here. Use the paint bucket, fill it in. And if you go outside your lines, you just cut it back. Now, the other way you can deal with your duotone color and your flat color, if you don't want to use the lasso over and over again, you can also just use your paintbrush. But make sure your paintbrush is hard-edged if you're trying to get that hard-edged duotone look. And I find the easiest way to do that is with the lasso because it is the most consistent and cleanest. Come on, fill it up. There we go. All right, it's looking a little bit better. Now, people that do a lot of digital coloring, they can just be incredibly fast with this because you don't use that many tools or that many keys. All right, now all I've really done, all I've added to my sandwich are highlights that now I'm cutting away from, right? That float on top of my local color. But now I'm gonna make a duplicate of my flat local color again, and I'm gonna call this my shadow duotones, hard edged. And instead of cutting the shadows out, because I've already cut out the highlights, at least on the body, all I'm going to do with this is go to Image Adjustment Levels and darken it by pushing it to the right, maybe about a quarter of the way. And now you can see the difference between the highlights and the shadows a lot more clearly.
And that might make some of your color selections a little bit more interesting in your highlights. So for instance, right here and right here, I might like having those various values. So duotone doesn't mean only two values, light and dark. It can mean any light and dark values within a range, even if it's hard edged. Come on, paint it for me. Whoops. So in the tail now I have three different blues. In the wing, I have three different blues. And all of that's okay. All right, now I'm gonna keep cutting out these highlights, but now those darks are gonna be even more pronounced because I darkened the flat colors underneath. So let's start with the eyes. Where do I want the shadow to be? Maybe right on the inside of the eye, like right here. Make sure I, I unlock or I lock every layer except the one I want to affect. Okay. Maybe for the inside of the mouth. A little bit on the tongue. Inside of the nostril. the ridge on the eye. This is why I never color with solid white because you can't change the color of solid white or solid black. They're not colors. So you can't even get adjustment variations on them. So I always use kind of cream colors. I never use solid black. I always use kind of um, either warms or dark bl or bluish blacks. but I'm cutting out some shadows. And again, it's no risk, because if I feel like that's too strong, I can always take the opacity down, right? But this helps me see the lighting really clearly. I can do little things like scalloping, because this is the hardest step of digital coloring because you have to make really distinct shapes. I actually say the hardest step is choosing the right local colors, local flat colors. But then this is next, because you're really defining where the edges change, right? Light to dark. Gonna undo that quickly and I'm just gonna ah uh, it's hard to get a nice shape there. There we go. And all this is, is duotone that makes a big impact in the graphic quality of your colors. Actually, I think that's fine. Okay. 
And when you want things to look metallic or shiny, you're going to have the contrast be even stronger between the highlights and the shadows. So on this helmet, I have really, really dark shadow shapes and really, really bright highlights. Now on the plumage here, it's going to be a little bit more subtle. Oh, don't like that. Ah. So it's hard for me not to be perfectionist about it, but it's best not to be, of course. We're just learning the techniques, seeing what they can get us. Okay. Let's see, maybe just a little shadow around the dimple. A little on the lower jawline. I think I messed that up. Maybe a little behind the nostril. All right, so that works pretty well. If there's a color I want to dim a little bit, like in here, I can just use my magic wand with contiguous on and select them. These are now my highlight colors, right? And I can just use adjustments individually and tone them differently, make them a little bit darker, like in that case. Or make them a little bit brighter if they're my duotones underneath. Remember, neither of these is affecting my local color. I'm just getting variations within the local colors. And then I can use that color hold down option, steal it, use it other places. Okay. So now I'm pretty happy with my duotone hard edge colors. Might soften this eye out a little bit. And it's looking very serial mascotty. Uh, 